right. Um, hey guys, I want to clarify something on the homework. Um, on the homework, it says that um, pretend you don't have the original samples for um, the second problem. Um, so this is a sign, Simon five, problem two. Okay, so for KD sampling, you you do need the original sample. So I sh that's that I should probably change that. So the way it works, I actually talked about KDE sampling in class. And um, and um, so if you didn't show up to class or you show up late, you would have missed it. The way it works is with KDE, kernel density estimation, you're essentially um, forming a histogram using Gaussian distribution. So at this time, when you use a Gaussian distribution, you need to determine a sigma, right? So you pick the sigma ahead of time, maybe one, or whatever number you wanted to pick. Once you have the sigma and you have the histogram, you are allowed to get probability density function with KDE. Now, now um, after you have P of X, I've taught you guys several ways to sample from P of X, one of which was rejection sampling. But um, but this question specifically asks you to do kernel density estimation. So how do you sample from P of X? Well, it's actually quite easy. You do need original data, original data, so that you train, um, train the KDE from. So the way it works, let's say you have n samples from the original, from the original data. What you do, step one is use a uniform distribution and pick a sample. So you basically just pick a sample uniformly. And when I say uniform, I mean equally likely, okay? Equally likely pick a sample from the original data. And let's say this sample, let's say this sample we're gonna call it, um, um, let's call it X1. All right, so this is the first, This you generated this sample and uh, no, let's not call it X1. We call it, uh, yeah, 100. So out of like a N number of samples, we pick uniformly the 100. You could have been any one, but let's say we pick the 100s. And now step two. Set the sample you pick, which is X100, as the mean of a Gaussian distribution. Okay. So now you have a Gaussian, which is 1 over square root of 2 pi sigma square e to the minus X minus mu, right? So the mu now is going to be this X100 square two sigma square. So the sigma is the value you pick originally. So sigma was from here. So you sample essentially a sample. So this is the Gaussian distribution with mean X100. Ah, let's make it bigger. This is essentially a Gaussian distribution with mean at X100 and sigma equals to one because of this. Now, you, you, you guys know how to sample from a Gaussian distribution. You can just use sklearn for this. After you sample from this, that sample is gonna become your sample number one, okay? That's how you get a sample. You repeat step one and two again. You go back and pick another random sample, okay? with out replacement, okay? No, yeah, sorry, with replacement, which means you just pick a random one. So you could have, you could pick a X100 again, but you probably won't. So you pick another sample, let's say this time is X45, the 45th sample. And then what you do is you set X45 as the mean of the distribution. Now you sample from this one, 
And that is going to become your sample number two. And that's how you create the samples. Now, if you do this correctly, um, if you do this correctly, the original histogram, right, the original histogram, and the samples you generate should look very close to each other. Okay, they should look pretty close to each other. So, so hopefully that helps. Now, why does this work? Well, if you guys were to go back to the mechanisms of how KDE was constructed, it's basically a histogram. So essentially, you are creating the equally likelihood. So, so you're equally likely to pick any, this, any of these points. But once you pick this point, you are stacking a Gaussian on top. But I mean, I don't want to get too much into a why this works. And uh, it does. Uh, maybe in the future, we'll talk more about it. But hopefully, this video will help you guys solve the problem.